We're live. Hi. Welcome to the Taco Cast. I'm Crystal. This is Bill. We don't actually have a topic. I was in charge of picking it, and I flaked literally all week long. All right. Well, that took up uh, 13 seconds, so... Awesome. We'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> next week, he'll flake again. <laughs> we're 40 episodes into this podcast, and it's just us flaking. Yeah, we're lazy. We have a child, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, there's nothing lazy about having a toddler that's... Well, we, we had to do that. And... Full-time exhaustion. You want to talk about your week? How was your week? Uh, my week was um, pretty good. Yeah. We had, uh, it was the second week of the new schedule that we put out. Uh, went really well. I'm sure you're super excited to hear about the, the, oh, the scheduling. Hold on. Siri wants to, wants to get in on this. It's just Taco trying to play music even though he's sleeping. But, okay, so your second week of your new schedule at work. Yeah, the new schedule. New, and yeah. how is it working out? Um... I am going to have to make some adjustments. I did not correctly account for certain times that things need to get done, but um, uh, other than that, uh, it's working out great. Without getting too much into what you do for a living, and what, and we're not mentioning the company, but what do you do? <laughs> Without mentioning what you do, what do well, you do? Well, I mean, not meant, you can talk about what you do, but not who you do it for or where. I, I work in the accessioning department of a pathology group. Can I say that? Is that yeah. What, yeah. What, is it, what is a pathology group? Because I'm not even sure of myself what a pathology we group have, is. We've literally been together for decades, and you have no idea what I do. Any of I the barely times know who I... you are. Yeah. <laughs> we've already discovered that in the first three episodes of this podcast, and this is the fourth, by the way. Uh, so. Well, uh, <laughs> for the first uh, decade and a half, two, two decades... Uh, that we were together, those times when I would leave the we house, and, yeah, and I would, tense. and I, yeah, the, those times when I would leave the house and I would come back later, I was working in a clinical laboratory. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I worked at a hospital. Okay. I, I think I, I knew that. Yeah. I think. I knew, I think I know. Do you remember that time that you fell and you had to come into the hospital and I saw you like five minutes after you hit the door? It's because I worked there. Oh. <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. And when you texted me and you were like on my way to the hospital, lol, I was like. <laughs> Well, how convenient, because look where I am. Um, wow. Yes, I worked in a clinical laboratory. Okay. And that uh, that basically, uh, oh, what's, what's a good way to describe the difference? So clinical lab is like your blood tests. When the laboratory comes in and they suck blood out of your arm, um, and then they, they send it to the magic place, right? They go to the, right. Yeah, they put magic your name place. on it. Ideally, they put your name on it. And <sighs> they put it in the tube system, and then they press the button, and it goes away. And then, like, two hours later, the doctor's like, this is wrong with you. I am the person that that comes to. Oh. Yeah. So you're the magician. I, well, um, I'm more like the magician's assistant. Oh, okay. I thought they called you a vampire. Yeah. No, that's not a technical term for you guys. It's not. It's not a technical term, and actually, a lot of phlebotomists, uh, when you make that joke, they'll smile at you, but the inside, they're like, "Yeah, like I haven't heard that a million and a half times already." Really? Yeah. But you weren't a phlebotomist. No, I was not a phlebotomist. I started out as a phlebotomist. Um, I actually started as a lab assistant. I worked for a small, uh, for a small doctor, independent doctor. Um, He's actually pretty tall. Okay, that's true. He was, a, he was a, a really tall guy. And he had a low tolerance for cheese. Yeah. Yeah. He tried to tell me once that he could eat a lot of cheese. And he's like, yeah, sometimes I'll eat like almost a quarter of a snack block. And I was like, Psh, quarter of a snack block? Big girl, I got your snack block. I can get a whole other snack block. When I have a cheese eating contest, I got you beat. Anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I worked for, I was a lab assistant. And from there, I went on to work as a phlebotomist for a large laboratory. From there, I went to go work at a hospital as a phlebotomist. And they had an opening for clinical assistant. Uh, I applied to that. I got accepted into the program. I did the, the clinical assistant program, and then I started working as a clinical assistant. My first day as a clinical assistant, my whole entire life got screwed. You were there. You remember. Anyways, worked a lot of hours. A lot of, so many hours. I was so tired all the time. Anyways, 
uh, eventually my job changed and morphed to where uh, I was no longer actually doing testing and stuff like that. I was primarily in charge of specimen processing. And that basically means your specimen, right? Somebody comes in, they stick a needle in you, you scream, they suck out a bunch of blood, they put it right. in the magic tube and it goes away, right? I get that specimen and then I evaluate it. Do I have everything I'm supposed to have? Did they collect it correctly? And then I process it. I'm also trained on shipping biohazardous specimens, both category A and B. Um, <laughs> to various laboratories that do additional testing. It's I, I can I can see from the look in your face you're trying to be interested, but you're like I don't understand. I am <laughs> so interested. <laughs> I'm hoping you get to the part where you're talking about the job you have now. All right, were you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm oh, getting okay, there. Great. I'm building them. I'm giving you the base. Great. The base. Okay. So I had a lot of years working in a clinical laboratory uh, as a specimen processor. Mm -hmm. In addition, like I said, to shipping. Um, yeah, at one point in time, they actually put me in charge of, like, buying stuff. And it was a bad decision because I made it look like Mardi Gras on there. And I was like, we definitely do need 15 of these bins. And they do all have to be in separate colors. So I can't tell you why, but it's definitely a thing. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I worked in clinical lab for a number of years. And then I there was a job opportunity in an anatomical lab. And the difference between a clinical lab and an anatomical lab, anatomical lab is like your whole parts, also tissues because we do histology, but I'm doing a really bad job of explaining what it is that I that people pay me to do. Um, oh, they pay you? Yes, oh. right? You, you, well, you I think, thought you got to just do you this. You think all these teas are free? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what you guys spend on tea, but there's a lot of tea in my house. Elizabeth and I recently discovered that there is, a, you know, like those loot crate and stuff like that that you can do? Well, there is a tea version of that, and by God, that is the best money I've spent on a subscription service yet. I get brand new teas every month, and it is glorious. Yeah, there's a lot of tea. <laughs> I, I, I've noticed the tea is just stacking up in, the, in our kitchen. It's going to need its own cabinet soon. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed what's happened in the far left cabinet, but... Uh, oh, it already has a cabinet? The tea already has its own cabinet, yeah. <laughs> okay. it's... No, I, I never go in there. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> no, see? Maybe it all gets up off the counter now. So, a anatomical lab is... Uh, what's a super simple way to, to describe it? It's cells and tissues. So, uh, say... Remember that time you fell down the manhole? Oh, unfortunately, I do. Yeah. So It wasn't fun. Say something absolutely awful had happened b besides you falling down the manhole, because that was bad, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And they had to remove your, your finger, right? Well, they're not just going to remove that finger. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah. Say they didn't salvage anything, and they had okay. to just be like, well, it's done, and then send it away. So they're not just going to send that away. They are going to send it to a pathologist. That pathologist is going to look at it, and he is going to determine... Was it the injury that caused it to have to be lost? Or was there some kind of underlying thing? And is that underlying thing something we need to be concerned about? You might have an accident and your finger's damaged, they can't salvage it, and they have to cut it off. And then the pathologist gets in there and goes, well, this accident shouldn't have caused this kind of injury. There's, you know, bone malformation or something else like that. And they also do it with single tissues. Like you've got a mole that's changing, which, by the way, if you have any moles and you notice that they are changing, you do need to get that looked at by your primary care provider. Very important. Melanoma's a bad thing. I thought if, you, if they took a finger or something off, like an arm or a leg or something like that, I thought you could have it. Yeah, you can. We do occasionally get requests to return tissues um, and body parts back to the people that they so came from. Do they actually send you guys body parts? Yeah, we do get entire body parts. That's creepy as hell. Well, I mean, not really. It's just... So you're like the bone collector? First off, that was a really good movie, and also no. That's like a totally different thing. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm just using the only references I have in my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no. No? So no? No, we do hold on to the tissues uh, for a certain amount of time. And then discard them if nobody wants them back. The other thing we do is we archive the tissue. There's blocks uh, that they make, paraffin-embedded blocks of tissue, um, 
that we've already looked at, determined what's going on with it, sent off a report to the doctor, and then we're holding on to that paraffin embedded block that we've made just on the off chance that later on down the road the doctor's like, hmm, you know what, I think we do need to look into that farther. Or say you go to a different specialist and the specialist is like, yeah, I agree with this report, but did they try X? And then he's going to get a hold of that pathology group. They're going to order additional testing. So we, we hold that for actually a pretty long amount of time. All right, more questions. Um, what do you guys do with all the body parts after you're done with them? They're disposed of. How? Uh, you throw them in the dumpster? Um, no, oddly enough, you are not allowed to just throw medical waste away. It has to be incinerated. So what do you guys do with them in the meantime? Do you guys like put them like Jeffrey Dahmer in a 55-gallon drum, or what do you do with them in between then? What do you think I do all day? I oh don't my God. know. I had no idea you did this. Yes. No, I thought you no. just you went somewhere for 10 hours and you came home, and eventually somebody sent you like gave you some money. Look, you know just about as much as about my life as I know about yours. Yeah, right. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. So <coughs> no, uh, it's it's held refrigerated. I don't know what the turnaround time for that is because I am not in charge of disposing that. That's the PAs, the pathologist assistants. Um, they hold it for however long they hold it for, and then they discard the specimen. It is picked up by a company that is certified in handling biological waste and incinerated. Do you guys like get like whole legs? Yeah. This is a lot. Hands. Okay, I'm I'm going to be 100% honest that I'm not really sure what the average number of body parts received by a pathology company would be. So I don't really know if it would be a lot. Are there a lot of serial killers who've worked for pathology groups? No, actually probably very few. Pathologists don't I know what you're talking about. You're talking about you're talking about angels of death, right? Serial killers well, yeah, that well, look for yeah. victims and uh, no, no, because pathologists don't typically see living patients. But you got to see them dead. Uh, the parts of them dead. Well, I feel like this we're having a disconnect in our conversation. <laughs> I mean, I really, it, it, it doesn't creep you the, the hell out at all? No, not it doesn't. Because you're a serial killer. <laughs> You've completely disconnected. No. Your body parts are coming in every day. You're like, do 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 do. I get to play with the body part. I. Uh, no. Do you guys chase each other around with other people's arms. Oh, for no, no. What are you? What do you watch? What do you people let him watch? Why is he like this? I don't know. I just have questions, and I didn't know. Yeah, no, honey, you don't chase people around with uh, with arms uh, or any body parts, actually, because uh, that is not only against probably every accrediting body's rules, as well as OSHA. Literally, every everything I can think of probably has a big like don't chase people with body parts section. It's, it's also just common courtesy to not attempt to infect your coworkers with... Okay, okay. Yeah, right. because keep in mind, when we're getting tissue, it's because something's wrong with it. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And oh, it's, that thing... It's, it's, so it's like disease. Yeah, and so that thing could be a transmissible disease, and you don't want to just be slapping somebody with well, your hand. you use the example, I fall down a manhole. I mean, you well, know... I was and, trying to make it personal. I was trying to relate it to you. Oh, okay, I, sure. I mean, to, I would, you know. when I fell down that manhole, I was hanging by my arm, and I couldn't get out. Uh, yeah, I... So I'm like, well, maybe it took my arm off or something. And well, I was going to say... It, disease. I was going to say that originally, but I thought it might traumatize you, so I was... I yeah. Scaled well, it back it, to a finger. Yeah, I will. I will have nightmares. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, was, I was thinking of you. Thanks. I, I really, really do appreciate you uh, bringing it all home for me mm -hmm. there. Uh, yeah. So now I know because of OSHA, not OSHA, but the HIPAA. Mm -hmm. Because HIPAA, you can't talk about you know if you've ever seen samples from somebody you know. No, no, you are not but, allowed to talk about individual pa Not only are you not allowed to talk about individual patients, you are not allowed to talk about cases outside of the ordinary. Or let that I interpret HIPAA in such a manner that if I get a case that is out of the ordinary enough that I think that somebody who accidentally overhears what I'm saying might be able to identify the person I'm talking to based on the aspects of that case, I do not talk about it. I take patient. Well, that, that totally ruins my next question. Yeah, I take patient uh, safety very seriously, Jesus. and that includes their right to privacy. 
Damn. Now I have now I have to come up with a new question. Oh, sorry, honey. I did not um, agree. Do they pay well? Yeah. Yeah, it pays pretty well. Oh. It's different from clinical lab. Um I I was not prepared for the difference. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean there? Well, working in clinical lab, you work fairly closely with pathology, and um, I mistakenly believed that I had seen a lot of of what pathology and the pathologist. One of the pathologists that I currently work for, I used to work with in my capacity of working in clinical lab. Um, he was my go-to person when I was helping to develop policies and procedures, and he would help me go through them, um, evaluate them once I'd got them, um, and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, I, I, uh, in hindsight, I was like, wow, the reason we always worked about clinical lab stuff is because he was here in his capacity as advisor for clinical laboratory and didn't really have a lot to do with pathology. Anyways, it, it's it's different. I was not entirely prepared for the difference, but it's been really rewarding, and I'm glad that I decided to make the switch. Do you know, is, so is there some kind of like specialized education you need to work in the capacity you're in now? Do you have, do you have to go to school and have a degree to do what you do? You need to have a base education for everything that happens in the laboratory that I'm working at. What that education needs to be depends on where you're working. Um, the PAs, uh, that's all, that's what Aaron does. Do I don't know what a PA is. They're the pathologist assistant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, they work in the gross room, so I've got a specimen and I take it to them and they will go through it and they will describe okay. it, the gross room. Okay, what's that? It's, it's where all the samples go and then they... Oh, that's where the body part com comes in? Uh, is it called, because it's gross? Uh, no, it grosses in like the, oh, the overview. Oh, the, oh the, kind of like your gross paint. Yeah, yeah. They're going to oh. go through, they're going to describe the specimen in its entirety, what it looks like, how large it is, um, all of that pertinent information. And then they're going to, if there's <coughs> if there's anything of note, they're going to take that out. They're going to, they're, they're going to dissect it. They're going to open it, you know. So couldn't it be gross in like two terms? I mean, I'm it's kind of gross getting body parts sent to you every day. I'm sure it probably could be, but keeping in mind, not only have I worked in a laboratory environment for the better part of two decades, um, I also come from a very long line of people who have worked in the medical field. Yeah, you have. Um, so it's not really, it's not really anything that's unusual to me. Okay. Well, nobody sends me body parts. Thank God. Every God. And please. Every, every, if you have any laying around at home, please don't send them to me. Every deity can. <laughs> that. Just, just making sure, you know, got to put that, you know, that disclaimer out there. I don't need anybody sending me body parts either. But, okay. I don't, I don't see body parts, uh, you know. So it would be kind of gross to me. So, you guys have a lot of security there. Yes. Oh, I notice I just can't just walk on in. Yeah, it... Oddly enough, you can't just walk into most facilities, <laughs> regardless of what they're doing. Well, I mean, when you, when you worked at the hospital, mm -hmm. I could just walk on in. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, because people just didn't care. And they'd leave the door unlocked. Yeah, well, I know that's not supposed to happen. But we I, we I found that um, it's easier for patients to access our facilities if we leave the doors unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> but if you lock them, if we, they can't get in. If we have a really easy day uh, if we lock the doors and then the patients just can't come in and we're like, whoo, today was cake. <laughs> they don't come looking for their arm or leg or anything? No. All right. You guys deal with, like, internal organs, mm -hmm. too? Does like do like somebody send you like a lung or liver? Or no, usually pieces of lung, but you know lung biopsies stuff. I don't like know. That. Maybe the person's it's dead. Get a lot of gallbladders. Get a lot of appendixes. Yeah. Gallbladders. Yeah. Is my gallbladder there? Probably not. They took it out of me. Yeah, but they didn't keep it, hon. They oh. they they would just like open it up, be like, "Yep, this is a gallbladder," and "Yep, it's inflamed," and then you know. Well, mine was leaking. Yeah. 
remember that whole thing about you know emergency surgery. You you, you didn't want to believe that I was I, there. I, I didn't really. I don't. I mean, I slept through the whole thing. So. I know. I know. <laughs> Where's my car? <laughs> I'm not. He's not getting. I woke up. Uh, and my car's gone. My car and my husband are gone. I'm like, where's my car? What What the hell? And Bill's like, I'm in the hospital. And I had my gallbladder taken out. I'm like, stop messing. Where's my car? Where are you at? This isn't cool. I, I got stuff I got to do today. And yeah, turns out he was actually in the hospital. Had emergency surgery. Apparently he'd had a really bad gallbladder attack uh, in that evening and tried to wake me up. And um, Yeah. I don't believe him. I think I would have woken up if somebody tried to wake up. I planned the entire thing. I was just like, watch this. (laughs) I'll screw up your day. My whole entire day. (laughs) During emergency surgery. Yeah, that's that's (laughs) what I was planning that day. I was like, you know what? I don't have anything to do between 2 and 5. I mean, emergency surgery. That sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. But your gallbladder did go somewhere. Yeah, well, it's not in me. So, I mean... Are sure? Maybe they just looked at it and nope. tucked it back in. Uh, they poked some holes in me and filled me up like a balloon and took it out. I don't know. What, I can't remember what they called that. What do they call that? Like, hold on. I, if you hadn't asked, I would have known. I, it's right on the tip of my brain. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Where they in, they they inject the air and inflate the the abdominal cavity so they can see what they're doing. Yeah, and then they took it. It's gone. Anyway. It's gone, though. Hmm. All right. So you guys get parts of both bodies mm-hmm. and internal organs, and you test them. Or you don't test them. No. But somebody else tests them. Uh-huh. And they pay you to do what? They pay me to enter the all the testing into the computer system. Okay. And what else? Uh... Sending, again, biological samples uh, to wherever they go, evaluating specimens. Um, wow. It, 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 my, my job sounds super exciting now that I'm trying to describe it. Uh, and? It, there's not nearly as much... Th- there's troubleshooting. There's definitely troubleshooting. Um, there's not as much uh, phone calling that I had to do. When I worked in clinical lab, anytime I got a specimen and that there was something wrong with it, Typically, I didn't have an order. Um, I would then have to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes of my day trying to track down who sent this to me and then get them to tell me why so I could do, you know, whatever I needed done with it. Um, so I don't do any of that. Do you have people you supervise? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to get at. Yes. yes <laughs> I was I trying do. to get you to say it, though. <laughs> So you, you do know what I do. <laughs> you supervise yes. people. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there are people below you? Uh, and above you? Yeah, I don't really know that I'd say below me. I mean, we're no, a team. No, they're all below you. You're super. <laughs> You're super. Da, 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 da. Super. We're a team. <laughs> my, job is to, my job is to help train people. Um, although I am still learning the capacity of my job, so I feel a little bit bad because i got to lean on other people for that. Um, be a primary point of contact. Um, make decisions about um, difficult cases and stuff like that. Hmm. All this sounds very exhilarating. I get the feeling that you're just saying that. Well, for not having a topic today for this podcast, I think you've done very well in talking about what you do for a living and what you've done in the past. Thank you. Would you like to end it with a positive note for the general audience out there? Like, uh, don't get sick and lose your body parts or any, any words of wisdom? So my plan, percolate this, think about this for a bit. What I'm thinking is we turn this podcast into a book group, right? I assign you guys a book to read, and then we all discuss it. Huh? Huh? Yeah, that's kind of the same reaction I got. Oh, fine. 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 It was a great idea. (laughs) It's a great idea. 
But you'd have to read a book a week. I read several books a week. When? What book are you talking about? I haven't seen you at the book for a long time. Most of the time when you see me with my phone... Yeah. I am reading. No, you're not. You're yeah. playing, like, Words with Friends and... I don't play Words with Friends. You know? No. Well, you used to. I, I, yeah, like, three years ago. Well, see, somebody did. Uh, I mean, because I've never played it. Yeah, no, I don't play Words with Friends. Um, you do something else on your phone. I play Connect the Dots sometimes. I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen that. And, uh... Especially if I'm tired and I've got, if I've got like insomnia and I'm really tired, but I can't, my, my brain just won't settle down and I can't sleep. I play connect the dots and I get like halfway through a game and I'll. This is true. That's exactly how you sound. (laughs) All right. Well. Thank you for joining us for TacoCast. I promise I will have... No, I'm not promising. I'm going to try super hard to have a topic for the next one. Um, but no, it's uh, my turn next time. He doesn't get a pick. Okay. <laughs> well, so, um, I'll try super hard to have a topic for next time. And if you guys can think of something you'd like for us to discuss, put it in the comment section below. Yeah, don't forget to like and share. Comment. Subscribe. Anything. Subscribe. Set on fire. Whatever you gotta yeah. get done. 